Okay, everybody, be honest. How many unread emails do you actually have? 651-641-1071. This is the Colleen and Bradley Show on My Talk 1071. I'm Colleen Lindstrom. Bradley Trainer is on vacation. Holly Roberts and I are here with you. Toot toot. And uh, we are literally asking you just to like air your dirty laundry, air your overflowing inbox on the Colleen and Bradley Show. How many unread emails do you actually have? It is okay. Actually, this is a judgment-free zone. Yeah, j- judgment-free zone from us too. So the reason we're asking this is that there's a new survey, and then that gets us talking, but a new poll found 43% of Americans currently have unread texts that they're ignoring. Most of these aren't spam, so they're actually trying to get a hold of you, but y'all aren't reading them. Now, the average person has 47 unread texts. 56% of of those are from friends and family. The other 44% are from brands and companies and scams and other things. Now, unread emails... Two thirds of people in this survey have unread meals or unread emails, and the average is one thousand six hundred two. Thirty two percent of you are freaks and have zero unread emails right now. That, that's my husband. My husband, and has I say a that song. lovingly. I know my lovingly. husband has a song he sings when he gets to zero in his inbox, and it's to the tune of Jukebox Hero, and it's. In box zero, a hundred percent of the time. Why every the, time? Well, you know what? And I, uh, he's not a freak, Colleen. And you, I know, and, and people but who he have is a little bit. inbox zero <laughs> are not a freaks. I say that because I don't know how you operate, and I, I am fascinated, and I'm in awe of you. I don't understand how you function. I will say it comes at a cost. On, I'm being very honest about that. It is, it is almost an obsession for my husband to get to his unread uh, things. And I just want to, while we're having this, while we're here in the trust tree, by the way, 651-641-1071, be honest. Mm-hmm. How many unread emails do you have? Yep. I just want to be clear that the reason why my husband thinks I'm the freak is because at present in my personal account, I have, I can't even say the words out loud. Say it. 260,984 unread emails. Yeah, you do. Mm-hmm. And yep. in my work account, <laughs> <laughs> in my thousand. actual business account, I have 1,716 unread emails. Yeah, you do. Yeah, On my phone, and just to really drive this all the way home, in my text, in my texts, I have 223 unread messages. 223 unread texts. Okay, but here's the thing. I, some of them, like you said, are like, you know, Amazon telling me I've got a package. I don't need to read that. Oh, you get or the, like, mm-hmm. yeah, like, or like some sort of group text where I see it like flash up on my phone and I look at it and go, eh, but I didn't actually open it to read it, but I see it on my phone. Do you, you know have, what I mean? You have that. I have you that. You have that. And if I needed to do something with it, I would probably, maybe, you don't know. Holly, would mm-hmm. you like to unburden yourself before we go to the phones? Yeah, sure. So in my personal inbox... I got 16,367 unread messages. Mm-hmm. And usually I try to cultivate, because I get, you get a lot of promotions and yeah. spams and things. Yeah, I usually try to unsubscribe. I, I've been doing that lately. It's, it's fabulous. It feels good. My work email, I actually try to keep my work email fairly tidy. So mm-hmm. I only have 585 messages okay. in my inbox. Okay. And I try to delete the things that are spammy and I do it right away. Yeah. And then I'm an email saver though and an archiver. If you send something, oh, I'm I, I'm a hoarder. I'm an to, email hoarder. But you have to have the receipts, right. man. I gotta have you the receipts. Gotta have the receipts. And and my text message is zero. I always read those. I don't let those go floating around. Okay. I like that about you. So. Let's go to the phones. We have Christine on the line. Hi, Christine. Uh be honest. How many unread messages do you have? Hi, Christine. Hey. Christine. Christine. Oh, hello. There you Hi. Are. Hi. She was busy <laughs> answering emails. It's That's fine. Right. It's fine. Christine, yeah, so, um, be honest. I'm one of those zero uh, freaks. Are you? I'm type A and I can't handle seeing stuff in bold. So, yeah. But I do have probably close to 15,000 emails. Okay. In the inbox. So. I have a question wow. for you, Christine. Do you, do you like my husband? Because, again, he's an inbox zero guy. Do you get hives when you see other people's uh, notifications? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how people do that. I just can't. Oh my gosh, I love it. Thank you for your call, yes. Christine. I'm not kidding you. My husband, like, 
he he won't look yeah. at my phone. It well, bothers well, him. Well, I don't know on my phone because I do get a number on yeah. my phone, which is 73,894. Yeah. I'm just like, meh. Okay. Whatever. I just want to say Paul McGuire Grimes just entered the chat and he uh, just walked into our studio and uh, you actually are the perfect one to have this conversation with because uh, you're freaking out about, and I just disclosed that in my personal email box, I have 260,985 unread emails. I have hives right now. I know. I can tell. I I don't like notifications on my phone. So all emails are read. All Facebook notifications are looked at. The only catch is that I may not be in a place to respond to said email or right. said Facebook. So right. then I forget that. Oh, I got that email that I need to respond to. I can't handle like the ding and the, like, the, no, the number. No. If even if they're junk, like they will get deleted right away. Okay. This is so funny. I just have like unburdened myself. Like I yeah. just, I'm like, ah, you know, it's Meh. fine. Let's go to the phones. <laughs> Laura's on the line. Hi, Laura. Laura, how just unburden yourself in this moment right here. How many unread I, e- messages do you have? I feel so much, Colleen, I feel so much better. I thought I was just like, <laughs> crazy. I have 62,617, but you, oh my God. I know. Yeah. I blew you out of the water, Ooh, right? Yeah. I'm here yeah. to make you feel better, Laura. Oh, you have. All okay. right. So texting, I don't have, I can't see if Sam's seeing that little red dot on my text thing. So I've, you know, I'm good on that. I get it. Well, thank you, Laura. And thank you know you, what? Laura. You're normal. You're just fine. Don't worry about it. I'll make you feel good about Look yourself. Look at you, Colleen. Boosting self esteem. That's what left I'm here right. for. Also, I just want to, like, I just want to encourage people to just really feel fine about the fact that. Just because people can get a hold of you all the time doesn't mean you're available. That's true. You got to set some boundaries. Yeah, man. It's okay. <laughs> Let's go to Annie. Hi, Annie. Annie, be honest. How many unread messages do you have? Well, I don't feel so bad now. I have just in the first box 5,697. Oh, that nothing. doesn't include my Gmail account. And I've got 420 unread text messages. Oh, Annie, I got to tell you something. I didn't even touch my Gmail account when I was talking about I my personal one. I don't even look one. at that one. And then if I include my side folders, oh, who, those go deep. Yeah, forget ah. that. <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> Thanks, your call, Annie. Annie. Wait, hold the phone, Colleen. Oh, Are yep. you talking about like a... Like a yahoo.com account? I'm not going to say. I All oh. I'm going to say is this. All I'm going to say is my husband and I are still hanging on to an account that nobody else uses anymore. That's all I'm going to say. Let's go to Karen. Ah! Hi, Karen. Karen, how, just be honest. It's okay. It's a safe space. Yes. I made you feel good about yourself already. How many unread emails do you have? Unread, I have like 7,600. But in my inbox, between the red and the unread, there are 19,089. There you yeah, go. That's nice. I that's like that. A, that's a nice number. I don't number. really delete anything. See, I'm the yeah. same way. I'm an email hoarder because I got. I want to make sure. There are so many times I forget things because I maybe I remember vaguely. We talked about this. I. It's like my memory. I have to go back. Well, and my grandmother's brand muffin recipe, which is like the right. side of our family, is in that mess of Right. Email. It's just a simple search away. That's right. right. Get your keywords. It. Karen, I get it. Thank Karen. you for your call. You're normal. Yep. You're just fine. You're fine. <laughs> Thank you for your call. Yeah. At one point in time, when I had a job where I was responsible for being organized about many different things, I used to put things into folders. Ah. And so then the folders would live on the left side column of the email account. But now I'm just like, well, whatever. You just use a keyword search and you're fine. It's there. It's there. Don't See, that's the thing. It. I used to try to be organized, too. Well, I guess we've shown that that's not going to happen. Also, as you're talking, as we're here in this moment, I am deleting my unread email. Because a lot of them are just pitches. I don't need that. Yeah. When we come back. I'm <laughs> By the way, I did tweet about this today. I got a pitch. So we get pitches all the time from PR people who want their clients to be interviewed on our show. I got one today emailed to me, dear Steve. And I was like, I don't need to know what comes after this. Delete. I did delete. Uh, well, first I took a, a screenshot tip. and then I deleted well, it. That's a pro tip. Look, if you want to pitch something, yeah, and this goes for anything. Yes. Make it personalized. Yes. Yes. Don't send a, Big old spread of emails. Yeah, no, because no. it's all, you. The probability of you getting to a Steve is very low. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be your blind copy. That is also my next hit single. When we come back on the Colleen and Bradley show, we've got our friend Paul McGuire Grimes from Paul's trip to the movies. He's going to tell us what we should or should not be watching after this on My Talk One Hundred Seven One.
Our friend Paul McGuire Grimes from Paul's Trip to the Movies has joined us on the Colleen and Bradley Show, My Talk 1071. I'm Colleen Lindstrom, Bradley, trainers on vacation. Holly Roberts and I are here together with you. Yeah. And our friend Paul McGuire Grimes. It's great to be here. We're glad to have you. You brought three offerings to us today right. to tell us whether or not we should be watching these things in the movie theater or on our couches. <laughs> And the one I would like to start with, I bet you can guess. Dear Evan Hansen. How did you know? Well, you and I are both fans of musical theater. Right. We've studied it. It's, it's it's in our DNA in a, in a way. And it's the big new movie in theaters this weekend. There's a lot riding on this film. I would say in terms of there's ex, there's high expectations for it. Yeah. Um, and I am just going to say I have not heard great things. And yeah. I'm going to also tell you I deliberately did not read You Send Us Notes every week. I <laughs> yes. deliberately did not read your notes because I wanted to experience this it's fresh. fresh. You know, it's interesting. It, this premiered at the Toronto Film Festival and was getting some pretty scathing reviews. Yeah. And I thought, okay, these may be critics that don't know the musical or just don't like musical theater. Uh-huh. Sure. Though, you know, that happens. That's valid. That's valid. There are movie musicals I love. Right. When other critics are like, what the heck? Uh-huh. Do you have it, Hanson? I l- love the stage show. I saw the tour when it came through. The movie does not work at all. Really? Correct. For multiple reasons. Okay, let's go through them. Yep. So, if you don't know the premise of the show, it's about this high school kid that Ben Platt plays, Evan Hansen, who suffers from severe mental health issues and anxiety. He's told, write letters to yourself as part of his mm-hmm. therapy. He writes one, it gets into the hands of his classmate, Connor, at, uh, in the wrong hands, let's put it that way. Connor ends up taking his own life. His parents find Evan's letter on him and think that Connor and Evan were these best friends when that's really not the case. He thinks they think that the letter to Evan was a letter between Connor and Evan. Yes, correct. And Evan can't tell the truth about what really happened. Mm -hmm. So this whole story of this musical is based on this really big lie and all of what happens after that. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a very delicate story to tell. It's a very delicate story to tell. And it's one thing to kind of suspend your disbelief, go through the story on stage with all of the theatrics, the really great music. Right. It's another thing to try to figure out how do we take that magic of the what's on stage yeah. and the story and then put it on film. So I do want to just say this part because one of the things, now I, I also went into Dear Evan Hansen's site unseen when I oh, went to see it on stage. Right. So I really, which is, that is shocking, right? Because yeah. oftentimes before you see a show, sometimes some people are like this, you've consumed all the music, mm-hmm. you know what you're about to see. Yeah. I went in, I had I didn't even know what it was about, honestly. Mm. And so there is a social media element to it. Correct. And the way that that is done on stage is amazing. Yes. I can imagine they screwed that up on film. Completely. Yeah. They, yes. And I know. That, yes. I'm just it, being real honest. It, yes. And they didn't necessarily have to screw it up. The one big, like, act one number, you will be found, uses the social media element mm-hmm. in the movie. But at that point, you're like, where was this the whole show? Right. Mm-hmm. Where was this the whole movie? I think the director, Stephen Chabosky, he did The Perks of Being a Wallflower, Wonder. He does know these teen stories well, but I think what he tries to do is condense it down to make it as believable as possible for film. And that can't happen with this story mm. and how and and the music. So let's go into let's talk about Ben Platt first. Yeah, he won the Tony for the musical. Right, seems like an obvious choice. We've seen Broadway actors then do the film versions. Mm-hmm usually doesn't work out well. Mm -hmm. Ben has been playing this role and founded this role back in 2014, if I remember correctly. He's had this iteration of forming who this character is. Mm -hmm. He was much closer to being a high schooler at the time. Right. So for some people, watching him in the movie will be like, you're too old. Right. Because he's how old now? 28. Yeah. That's, Mm -hmm. you know. That's like 21 Jump Street. Yeah. Yeah, Some people won't care about Mm -hmm. that, though. And you may see some CGI to de-wrinkle at, at times. Okay. <laughs> if that doesn't bother you, fine. What my bigger issue is comes to an acting element where on stage, you have to play to a back of a house. Right. Back of a Broadway house, you got to be seen. That's a big difference from when a camera yeah. is two inches away from your face. Yeah. And there are things that he's doing physically, his mannerisms, his physical choices don't read on camera well. Mm-hmm. So uh, so what I'm hearing you say, correct me if I'm wrong, is mm-hmm. basically he's still playing the character he played in the stage version, but he's playing it on camera. Yes. And that's where the translation is lost. And trying to play him younger now. Yeah, yeah. that's a lot. Well, it's interesting that you bring up that they, they CGI to de-age him. At and, times. At times, which is right. strange, but it sounds like... The Irishman, the movie, the Martin yeah. Scorsese yeah. movie, mm-hmm. they de-aged 
Robert De Niro's character. Mm-hmm. But it didn't work because his mannerisms were still that right. of a person in his 70s. <laughs> right. You could just tell right. you by can the movement. de-age their skin, but you can't de-age, de-age their the body. humanity. Yes. Yeah, their yeah. humanity, the way that they move, the way that their eyes look. And it stands out when you've got people like Kate, Kate, Caitlin Deaver and Amanda Sunberg, who are in their 20s playing high schoolers. Right. They're, they're a more natural fit than what Ben Platt is doing. Mm-hmm. That's the acting. Amy Adams, Julianne Moore play the mothers in the movie. They're great. Not seen a lot, but they're great. Yeah. And then you have the music. So the music is a huge part of yeah. this story. It the musical. Yes. Obviously. Yeah. In the movie, at times it almost feels like it's like not as important. The music, mm. the numbers themselves feel like inner monologues uh, where Evan is singing or another character singing, but I never got the impression that everyone else in the scene knew that there was singing going on. Uh, as if, if he was singing in his own and then everyone else was actually watching him talking. So it's like solo, solo. But then that breaks during one number when Evan and Zoe are then singing together. And you're like, no, but that's not that's not how mm. you structured how the music is in this movie. Right. You know, I what I what I find interesting like I I really <laughs> These are really did picky no, things. No, but, but but they're not because I, I really do think um in the, I, there's an urgency or like a, a wish or a con- not a concern. There are people who feel passionate about bringing theater into the into the whole into the entire culture right right like but this is but oftentimes it's not done well it's it's hard to do well right and 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 we've seen it with how they've put um musicals on television yeah they've tried Mm -hmm. but there are there's so i've been talking about this in other realms of my life trying to do a thing that you do in person Listen, this has been the entire last year right. of our lives. Yeah. Trying to exactly encapsulate how we communicate in person mm. in a room together in a distant way, it just doesn't always work. Right. And those squabbles aside, yeah. at the end of the day, what really matters is if the teens and the parents that are watching this movie get the message, get the message mm-hmm. and then have those conversations about mental health. So if a teen goes to his mom or his parents and says, I'm struggling right now. We Can we talk about this? Yeah. Then at the end of the day, that's what really matters. How many ticket stubs? Two and a half out of five. Ooh, all right. We'll be back with Crazy <laughs> Stupid Idiots on My Talk 1071. Hi. It's the Colleen and Bradley show on My Talk 1071. I'm Colleen Lindstrom, Bradley Trainers on vacation. He'll be back actually on Monday. Uh, and hopefully we'll get to hear all about his amazing, beautiful vacation. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, but in the meantime, Holly and I are here with you and we've got your crazy, stupid idiots. Well, then. I guess one could say, that's a crazy, stupid idiot. Colleen and Bradley present CSI. It stands for crazy, stupid idiots. Oh, yes, those crazy, stupid idiots. They're to your right, they're to your left. And hopefully when you look in the mirror, there isn't one looking right back at you. Oftentimes we find them in the state of... Florida. Florida. And sometimes Uh, other places. That's true. Now... I don't know. Did we talk about a guy at a car dealership in Florida? Sure. I mean, I'm sure we have. Did we? I don't know if we've talked about this guy at a car dealership in Florida, though. Let's just go with it. Who, I'll who, pretend I've never heard of it Did before. he have a trade-in? Maybe. Like a vehicle? Probably. Because then I can tell you, if you've heard that story, then I can tell you about somebody who got into a situation in Washington State. Now, let's go with the Florida guy. All I right. Think Florida, Florida guy. Florida. Florida, Florida, Florida man. Florida man. It's Florida. To me, it's going to all be new. Great. It's new to you. Mm. So we're going to Florida. We're going to Jacksonville. Oh, it's a good spot. Yeah, good spot. (laughs) You know, you've never been. Never been. Okay. Uh, They went to the Lake City Chrysler Dodge Jeep dealership. Okay. And this guy went to the dealership. I mean, no big deal, right? You go to a dealership, you want to get in a new a new car, and you do a trade in. Yeah, that's how you do it when you want to get a new car. So. This guy went in to trade this car because he wanted a new one. And the staff was dotting their lowercase J's and crossing their T's. They logged in the vehicle number. They're like, okay, sir, we're going to do that. We're going to check all of these things. Then they discovered something when they were doing their homework. Uh, They discovered that this car that this guy was trying to trade into the dealership was stolen was stolen from the same dealership oh, from them a few days Dude. before yeah so this person was trying it seems to like trade they wouldn't in have car. had to go all the way down that road 
if you see what I'm saying. Yeah. And then the cops were called, and then they read the guy his rights and told him that, you know, hey, you stole this car. He was like, well, no. But then they, they're they not sure if they can identify this guy through video. Oh. But they were like, no, honey, you did. Mm. No, honey. Did they? He's so trying. they didn't, did they not arrest him? No, they arrested him. Oh, okay. Grand Theft Auto. Got it. Dealing in stolen property. Yeah. Criminal mischief. Sure. And petite theft. Oh, petite. Petite theft. Just a little one. Yeah. You know, you, you try to do one over on somebody, yeah. but here's the thing. Like, don't do it to the same person that you stole from. Right. It'd be like, you know, if I took your headphones, then you were looking for new headphones, and then I'd be like, oh, Colleen, I found these headphones. And I'd be like, those are my headphones, kind of, and you took them. Kind of like CSI gaslighting. It is CSI gaslighting. Mm-hmm. Also, don't take my headphones. I won't. Thank you. I know you won't. I'm, that's... For other ears. That's for the royal we. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You guys the have no you. idea how often headphones go missing at this place. That's why I keep them on behind a locked door. That's right. All right. Uh, okay. We're going to jolly old England. And oh boy, was England jolly in this story. <laughs> oh yeah. So here's what had happened. This couple was um, getting busy. In their car. Yeah. In England. Mm -hmm. Um, They uh, drove their Toyota Yaris. Oh, honey, why are you having sex in a Toyota Yaris? That is actually going to come into play. Ah! Uh, They drove their Toyota Yaris to a secluded area the other night. Now, a Toyota Yaris, to your point, Holly, is a very compact car. Very. It's a very small car. Very. And they drove it to... Now, this... I, this is where I have questions. Were it I who was looking for a new and exciting place to have the nookie, I would f- never think a car would be a, a fun place to do that. But if you were going to drive your car to a secluded area, by virtue of the fact that you drove your car to a secluded area, really anywhere in that area would be game. Yeah, just lay down a towel. You're fine. You're fine. You don't even have to. If you don't have one, it's fine. Be spontaneous. You could still use the car, but maybe not be inside the car. Sure, like right? it's a support apparatus. Yeah, exactly. This couple was experiencing each other mm-hmm. in the car, mm-hmm. and sometimes there's movement. Actually, there's always movement. Yeah. And what had happened was they accidentally hit the emergency brake during the act. Oh. They turned the emergency brake off yeah honey as it turns out they were on a hill honey no and the whole thing flipped down the hill flipped the car flipped holly i am going to enhance 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 this story with a photograph that is going to make your day oh Uh, so the couple they're fine don't worry about them they're fine, no! but yes, they got stuck in their car. Oh, so embarrassing. They obviously were not buckled in. So it you, is kind of a big deal that they weren't hurt. How do you file that insurance claim? Thank you. The car ended up on its side and they were not able to get out. So they oh. had to be rescued. Oh. That is so embarrassing. Now, when asked, because as I always love, the authorities always ask, why were you doing what you were doing? You just got to be honest with that one. But they like, said we wanted to stop. They they said they were trying to strengthen their relationship. Yeah, you you just you can't say otherwise. I would just say maybe maybe that is a sign from the universe. Also, car sex is overrated. Uh yeah, car I, th- sex I feel is like totally overrated. everybody should know that by now. That's something that you hear about when you're younger, and you're like, oh, someday I'm going to have car sex, yeah. and then when you do it, you're like that is not at all what the fantasy was. You know, at least now, a lot of hatchback SUVs, compact SUVs, you can maybe fold down the seat. But trying to have sex in a sedan, forget it. No. It's lame. Also, also that, okay, I'm not, am I going to say it? I'm going to say it. You know me. I'm going to say it. I tried to have sex in a Cadillac Atero once. No, don't do it. (laughs) What I was going to say is like, that is the thing that you do when you're, when you don't have a place where you can have privacy. That's true. That is not an activity that you do when you're an adult and you have a place where you can do that stuff that you've upgraded. 
Like when you're an adult and you have a home or, you know, money for a hotel or I I don't know, whatever, you don't need to do it in your car because you've upgraded. That's true. You've upgraded. I don't know. If you're going to do stuff in a vehicle, just keep it to like maybe third base. Also, get a bigger vehicle. Oh, yeah. Yaris? No. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Fold down the seat. I say no S to the Yaris. Mm-hmm. Ah, where now, are we going next? This isn't necessarily a crazy, stupid idiot, but I did want to bring this story to the attention of the community. Okay. And I don't know how this exactly happened, but this is something that someone on TikTok shared with the world. As all things. All we know is that this woman is in the United States. Or she goes under the TikTok username T Kazi G. Okay. I feel like you said something naughty, but fine. And she shared <laughs> Something that happened to her that I don't even know how this happened, and I don't even know how to tease it. Oh my gosh. She found a live bat hanging from her crotch. Oh. Okay. I, I can't say it don't otherwise. Know what to, I don't she know what to do. She had a bat in that. her belfry. How, do you, how does that happen? She asked the same question, Ms. TikTok user. She shared this. Apparently, she films herself, her surprise reaction. She pans down to show a tiny bat nestled in the crotch of her jeans. Okay. I don't know, Connie. I, there's, I don't I, know. So many questions, zero answers. I feel like that's like, did, would, was she, did she put the jeans on and then realize it was there? I don't or know. Was she was she already wearing the jeans and the bat showed up for the party? I I, now, I don't know. She explained that she hadn't noticed the bat between her in her legs and her crotch until she took a step. No, no. And she heard a squeaking noise no! from between her legs. No. She said, "No." I called my husband. I was terrified to move until he came to get it. Then her husband grabbed the bra- the bat. No, I hate to say it. The bat passed away shortly after. Oh my gosh, I I don't mess with bats, so that's my first thing. Like I don't, and neither does my husband. I want to be very clear. I know. That if I found a bat in my crutch, I'd be on my own. <laughs> like, I just want the world to know that. Yeah. I am aware that I would be on my own with that bat. Now, I love the internet because <laughs> the internet acted accordingly. And I want to share some oh, people's responses good. to this woman on TikTok finding a live bat in the crotch of her pants. Some people had to say, with wings for your protection. Okay, well done. Well done. <laughs> Another commenter added, they say if you don't use a space enough, Spirit Halloween takes over. So that's great. That is good. Yeah. Gosh, I love the internet. Uh huh. Somebody said, sounds like a freaky Dr. Seuss book, Bat in the Cat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, that one actually takes the cake. Uh huh. Yeah. No, somebody else did say, man, I'm jealous. I just have dust and spider webs in mine. Okay. So, that's hilarious. The internet does provide some color commentary on this. Uh, yeah, it seems like she's okay. It seems like the TikTok user went and got a rabies test because you're going to want to get something you like do, that. That's what you do when bat. you find a bat in that area. But I will say that bats are cute. Holly. They're cute. No. Have you seen their little faces and their little... I don't, I'm good. I'm golden. They're, I have cats. I'm happy with those faces. And then they like to eat the little fruit and sometimes they eat bugs. Look, man, they're part of nature. We were outside the other night and my daughter, a bat, like flew nearby and yeah. my daughter goes, oh, look, there's a bird. And I was like, no, honey, that is a bat. Take cover in this moment. Oh, they're cute. They're in my neighborhood, too. I No, they're definitely not cute. Definitely not look cute. Look at their face next time, Colleen. Holly, how would you feel if you had one in your crotch? Well, if I had one in my crotch, I mean, come on. I'm still traumatized from a time I, tr- I went to put my jeans on and a spider walked out of the leg. Yeah, I understand that. One time yeah. I went in to reach in a wardrobe. And uh, there was a cockroach about the size of my fist oh, that was gosh. on it. No thanks. And then I just had to go, bye, friend. You're learning to fly no, today, thank honey. You. You're out of here. <laughs> You're Oof. out of here. Yeah, I don't, nature and I don't get along very well. Yeah, so there when you go. When we come back on the Colleen and Bradley show, somebody I do get along with, Paul McGuire Grimes, is going to be our special guest star of the Throwback Live. We're going to do that after this on My Talk 1071.